Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on constant rate of change. Our vocabulary startup is where we will start off. A rate of change is a rate that describes how one quantity changes in relation to another. In a linear relationship, the rate of change between any two quantities is the same. A linear relationship has a constant rate of change. So as we look into our real world link, a computer programmer charges customers per line of code written. Fill in the blanks with the amount of change between consecutive numbers. And so as we look on top, from 50 to 100, from 100 to 150, from 150 to 200, from 50 to 100, that is increasing by 50. From 100 to 150, that is also increasing by 50. From 150 to 200, that also is increasing by 50. What about from 1,000 to 2,000, 2,000 to 3,000, and 3,000 to 4,000? Well, those are increasing by 1,000 each time. And so, label the diagram below with the terms change in lines, change in dollars, and constant rate of change. Well, what does this $1,000 represent? Well, this was a change to our cost. So this is going to be change in dollars. So we can write change in dollars And then what does the 50 lines? Well, that's plus 50. That's our change in lines. And now you can see where we simplified 1,000 over 50 lines down to $20 per one line. We have one more blank and one more set of words. The constant rate of change is $20 per line of programming code. We'll be looking for constant rates of change in this lesson today. The first way we're going to use to find this constant rate of change is by using a table. As it says, you can use a table to find a constant rate of change. So in our first guided example, the table shows the amount of money a booster club makes washing cars for a fundraiser. Use the information to find the constant rate of change in dollars per car. That dollars per car is very important. So important, I'm going to put a box around it. We're going to be setting up and finding a unit rate, dollars per car. But the first thing we're going to do is to look for the change. Well, our change in the number of cars from 5 to 10 is 5. From 10 to 15 is plus 5. And from 15 to 20 is plus 5. All constant changes. From 40 to 80, we're adding 40. From 80 to 120, we're adding 40. And from 120 to 160, we're adding 40. The next step is to find the unit rate to determine the constant rate of change. And when determining what goes on top of what, look back at your question. Dollars per car. And so the book set this up, change in money, our dollars, over our change in cars. So dollars per car helps us set up this unit rate. 
So our change in money was $40. Our change in number of cars was five cars. So $40 over five cars is our constant rate of change. And we can simplify that by dividing by five on top and bottom to get $8 per one car. So the number of dollars earned increases by $8 for every car washed. Now we can attempt these in our got it questions. The table shows the number of miles a plane traveled while in flight. Use the information to find the approximate constant rate of change in miles per minute. Well, this miles per minute is going to be key. Let's first look for our change. For our minutes from 30 to 60, we are adding 30. From 60 to 90, we are adding 30. And from 90 to 120, we are also adding 30. What about our changes in distance, our changes in miles? Well, here we need to look at what do we add to 290 to get to 580. Well, if you can't do that mentally, like we can go, well, 30 plus 30 is 60. One thing you could always do is take that second number, the 580, and subtract the first number, 290. And when you subtract, 0 minus 0 is 0. Have to borrow from the 5, you end up with 290, meaning to the first 290, you add another 290 to get to 580. What about from 580 to 870? Well, again, if you can't do that mentally, you can take 870 minus the 580 and subtract. And once again, the result is 290. So 580 plus 290 gets you to the 870. And one last time, from 870 to 1160, if you need, set this up and subtract. you once again get 290, which gets us a constant rate of change for the distance of 290 miles. Now, we're looking for an approximate constant rate of change in miles per minute. So we're going to set this up, change in miles, over our change in minutes. Well, our change in miles is 290. Our change in minutes was 30. When we look at our 290, over 30, and we divide by the 30 on top and bottom, our result is about 9 and 7 tenths miles per minute. Let's look at B. The table shows the number of students that buses can transport. Use the table to find the constant rate of change in students per school bus. Well, let's look for our changes here. From 2 to 3, we're increasing by 1. From 3 to 4, we're increasing by 1. And from 4 to 5, we're increasing by 1. What about our next one? on the bottom for number of students. Well, from 144 to 216, again, I can't do that in my head, 
So if I were to take 216 minus 144 and subtract, the result here is 72. So 144 plus 72 gets me to 216. And then I go, oh, yeah, that, that is my pattern because 216 plus 72 is 288. And 288 plus 72 gets me to 360. And so now, for my rate, I'm looking for students, or the change in students, over the change in buses. And so my change in students was 72. My change in buses was 1, which actually simply simplifies into 72 students per bus. The second way we can find constant rates of change involves using a graph. You can also use a graph to find a constant rate of change and to analyze points on the graph. So for our examples 2 and 3, the graph represents the distance traveled while driving on a highway. Find the constant rate of change. Well, our y-axis our miles, our distance, our x-axis is going to be time. And for these changes, we're always going to have our y-axis over our x-axis, our change in y over our change in x. Let's make sure we write that down. Change in y over the change in x. And so, to find the rate of change, pick any two points on the line, such as 0, 0 and 1, 60. Well, here we have our 0, 0 and our 1, 60. What they did was they looked for their change in miles. Well, that's our y, and so we went 60 minus 0 over a change in hours, 1 minus 0. And so that simplified into 60 miles over 1 hour. Explain what the points 0, 0 and 160 represent. Well, use our units to help you here. Our x coordinates are time the y distance. So 0, 0 represents traveling 0 miles in 0 hours. The point 160, well, 1 is our time, 60 is our miles, so 60 miles in 1 hour. Also, we can notice that this is the constant rate of change. Let's try our got it question. Use the graph to find the constant rate of change in miles per hour while driving in the city. Well, once again, we're going to look for our change in y over our change in x. And so the first step is to pick two ordered pairs. Let's say we pick 130, so 1, 30, and let's just pick, because we can, 3, 90.
remember, ordered pairs are written x, comma, y. So if we're going to look for our change in y, which is our change in miles, over our change in x, what we can do is take our two y's, which are 90 and 30, and subtract, so 90 minus 30, and then our change in x. Now notice we picked the 90 first for our change in y, so we're going to pick the 3 first for our change in x. 3 minus 1. Now if we subtract this, 90 minus 30 is 60. 3 minus 1 is 2. And 60 over 2 simplifies into 30 over 1. Now, our y was miles, our x were hours, so we can say this is 30 miles per or over 1 hour. So we can actually just write this in words as 30 miles per hour. And one of those two answers works for our constant rate of change. So again, identify two ordered pairs, find your change in y over your change in x, and simplify. Then, on the lines below, explain what the points 0, 0, and 130 represent. Now before we do that, I think it's very helpful to know that our x is our time in hours. So we can say just time for our x, and the y is our distance, so we can put time, comma, distance here in order to help us out to identify what 0, 0 and 130 truly represent. And so for our 0, 0, we can write that the point zero, zero. Now, that means zero miles for our y and zero time for our x. So we're going to say the point zero, zero represents traveling zero miles for the distance in zero hours, and that represents our time. Now, 130, a little bit more uh, work to put there. The 1 represents our time in hours. 30 is our distance in miles. So what we can write is the point 130 represents traveling we'll go with the 31st so 30 miles and then lastly the one in one hour our last guided example for the lesson ties it all up the table and graph below show the hourly charge to rent a bicycle at two different stores. Which store charges more per bicycle? Explain. Well, we have our two methods for finding constant rate of change. We have our table and we have our graph. And so what we need to do is to find our rate of change in the table and compare it to the rate of change in the graph. Well. We're looking for store charges more per bicycle, so that's going to be cost per bicycle. And so as we look here, our cost in the table is increasing by 12, our time is increasing by 1, and so that represents a $12 per 1 hour 
constant change. What about super cycles? Well, they pick these two points right here and there. And if I were to write those points down, that is 1, 8, and 2, 16. And if we were to actually calculate our change in y over our change in x, remember for our y's, we have the 16 and the 8. So the change in y is going to be represented by 16 minus 8. In our change in x's, we have this 2 and 1. So we can write this as 2 minus 1. So this change is going to be 8 over 1. Now the y were our dollars, so 8 dollars over 1 hour. So we have $12 for one hour at Pedals Rentals and $8 for one hour at Super Cycles. And that's what we have in our summary box here. The cost at Pedals Rentals increases by $12 per every hour. The cost at Super Cycles increases by $8 for every hour. The question's asking which store charges more? Well, $12 per hour is greater than $8 per hour. So, Pedals Rentals charges more per hour to rent a bicycle. So, in this lesson on constant rate of change, we can use both a table and a graph to find constant rates of change. That's it for this lesson. Good luck.